In uh, 1918, a new respiratory virus uh, jumped species from animals to humans, uh, spread throughout the world, infected probably about one third of the world's population. It killed between 50 and 100 million people, which if you adjust for population, that would be equivalent to 225 million to 450 million people today. Uh, the overwhelming majority of those deaths occurred in a very brief period of probably about 14 to 15 weeks. I'm John Barry. I'm a writer. Uh, wrote a book, among others, uh, the, called The Great Influenza, the story of the deadliest pandemic in history. I'm also uh, on the faculty at the uh, Tulane University School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. This was not ordinary influenza by another name. People could die in less than 24 hours after the first symptoms. That wasn't common, but it definitely happened. Uh, some of the symptoms were horrific. In fact, it was initially misdiagnosed as everything from cholera, typhoid, dengue, which is referred to as breakbone fever, to give you a sense of those symptoms. People could bleed not only from their nose and mouth, but from their eyes and ears, which is pretty horrific and terrifying. When public health authorities are saying this is ordinary influenza by another name, the public knows perfectly well that they were being lied to. And I actually think that when you come right down to it, society is based on trust. And without trust, society is going to begin to break down. And that's actually what happened. I mean, the lies were so extreme in Philadelphia at a time when the city was digging mass graves, priests were literally driving horse-drawn carts through the street calling upon people to bring out their dead. One of the Philadelphia newspapers said, quote, this is not a public health measure, there is no cause for alarm, unquote. I mean, how stupid did they think people were? So knowing that they were being lied to, not being able to trust anything that they're being told or anyone in authority, people began to lose trust in each other. It was very alienating. It, it became every person for himself or herself, every family looking out only for uh, themselves. Influenza, it's always going to be a new virus. Coronavirus is their natural reservoir apparently is bats. But number one, this is a lethal threat. Number two, it is not going to wipe out civilization, but it's dangerous. Number three, we do have the opportunity to exercise some control over what happens both to us individually and to the society and the economy. The social distancing, as the Chinese have uh, have uh, demonstrated, you know, works uh, and can have a significant impact on the outcome of the in the course of the disease. If there is widespread compliance, then I think we can, you know, significantly affect the course of the disease. And if there isn't, uh, we could be in for it.